Alright, here we go. So, it is Saturday, Ides of March 17th. You know? So, UFC tonight, and it's like, what time is it? It's 8 o'clock, right on the dot. And, uh, I was already like, yeah, we got some big fights tonight, oh yeah. We got Verdum against the Russian tall guy. I mean, I can't even, like, blast off with the names, because I'm excited right now, you know why? Because I just watched the first round of Verdum against this Russian huge dude. And, like I said, it's just 8 o'clock and it's supposed to be starting preliminaries at 8 o'clock, typically. But, the thing is in London, and I just, I just did, went to the UFC Fight Pass. You know, and I got a new free week, by the way, because I had to get a new debit card. So just punched in some new numbers, and, and instead of putting my name, I put Busta Motherfucker. <laughs> That's my new name, man. Busta Motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, so got my new free week of UFC fight pack, and all these fights already happen because it says on the side says watch. I was like, that must be a mistake. It didn't even start except for the free fight passes. And they all said watch. I just kept going down the list all the way, all the way to the the main event, the Russian and we're doomed. Anyway, I just watched round one. It's no mistake. Yeah, because it's earlier or something over there, something like that. Same so way. Anyway, Watch round one, and it was awesome because like Verdum, he come out, he tried to take, he did take him down, but he had no success in the Russian's guard, you know, and uh, and the Russian got up with about a minute to go, busted him out nice with a nice uppercut, ah, boom, and uh and um uh, you know, but I seen the Russian was huffing and puffing, so all that defensiveness on the ground. I didn't think it would happen that fast, but he's huffing already. But we're about to start round two. So I'm going to go back to it. And you all could just watch. You could just watch me enjoy this. And then I'm going to watch me enjoy it too and see what's what. You ready? Here we go. Bam. Why did you stop? Why did you stop? Why did you stop? Breathe. Breathe slow. Let, let, let's work our hands. Let's put them against the cage. Let's or do Doom's do corner. Do. His eyes all busted up. His right eye. So no messing around in that first round. Just like Doom, you, Sasha. Straight in on the single leg. Just Both see when you did your Brazil set, man. Your right eye is all busted up. Away. I just sent and you a message to a top Facebook. position where he sticks in the guard. Standing right eye being busted over his opponent. So it's a good shot. Maybe Jack grabbed you by the neck, scruff, and he was surfing. And just like, blah, 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 all over the reach. In which one of those like, uppercuts got through and you go, reef boy. To the some right reef for you. I don't know, man. The corner. Anyway, we're going in round two now. The unauthorized reproduction or distribution of this copyright work is illegal and punishable under law. Stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back. Hold, hold, hold. Are you guys going to? Let's go. Put this down, this mouse, I don't need it. Five from here in the beer, wow. Arena. Verdum in the black, Volkov in the chalk. Volkov found himself on his back for a long period of that first round. But then he came back very strong, as we can see by the damage to the right eye yeah. of the former champion. Yeah, right eye's getting puffy. Leg kick on the Russian. Difficult to size up a fighter like this when you know they've got Russian got some a strange really tattoo of a stingray. Look like selection of strikes that they can throw at you. Russian well, got no ocean. Why he got a stingray on his back? I don't also know. Kickboxing, lots and lots of Never know what people are gonna get into. Wins, Nineteen of them by Who knows? Might not even be a stingray. It could be some kind of strange demonic thing. Who knows? Who's gonna try and bait him? He's laughing at. He's laughing at what so we're doing. <laughs> They're talking oh, to one another. Great play for that there. There it is. Oh, That's a down mistake again. by Volkov. No, he ain't getting... Look at that good takedown oh. defense there from Volkov. If he can continue well, yeah, defending no, these takedowns and force this into a striking I called the Russian, by the way. Fight. But you know, Verdum's record is 23-7. 
237. You know, this is a significant symbol between me and Jack. So, oh, Jack, you picking for Doom, huh? Well, I'm going with the Russian. Let's do it. So, this is the little eye versus the big eye. As is typical when we watch combat together. And if he can maintain that atmosphere in that octagon, then Vadoom will dominate. But Volkov is slowly finding his confidence here. Yeah. He's, he's been able to defend a couple of takedowns now, which means that now Vadum he knows, knows he forced Vadoom to stand the train with him. Which this really guy. does even out the playing field. We know Vadoom's an excellent striker. But, but he's with the added advantage of being Russian. six foot seven and younger Damn. and knowing that you've Close got your mask, uh, bro. a champion in he's front of you that you make it They're both puffing up. That's going to spur Volkov up. I don't get it. And we're talking about the, the best seven champion minutes. And that he's a number Just two had a rest for two. Well. He's, so he's a recent former champion. champion. He's still very much there in the running. It is a massive opportunity for Volkov. Drawing over here, man. I'm going to be drawing on fast and chia seeds I've been eating. Nice man. shot left from Volkov. He's got a big he looks to me five a pound bag of like organic chia seeds. He Put him in my yogurt, three tablespoons in it. Greek yogurt, oh, man. Feel all kinds of buzz buzz. Superfood. Chia. Oh, he did take him down. Did he got him. Oh, he's already, he's already advanced his position. Half guard. Now he's going to try to mount him. Push him down on his left knee. Oh, uh, right back guard. in the guard. See, he can't even, he ain't in his strikes ain't even hitting the target. Just over to Russia just finds the head of Volkov. He's good, this guy in his guard. Well, he's just punches ain't doing nothing but wasting energy. Just wasting energy, just wasting energy for a doom. You're already huffing, man. He's just feeling like the doom. Of I mean, seriously, why don't you just punch to the body? Because you're blocking all your damn head punches, you're just wasting your energy. I'm trying to tell you all, the head hunt too much. You know how soft our bodies are? The head is hard. Somebody who's very slick the crowd is getting up in here. Whereas oh, Vadum in the top position here in the down dark, with big, long his, his submission game is very much limited, so what he can, can do is he can work that can opener, he can continue to apply pressure, and he can land shots to do damage, as we've seen there with the elbow that landed that uh, opened up that cut. So with that can opener, you're trying to guys, open the guard up, the so you can advance your position, correct? Yes, I mean, if you're Vadum in this circumstance, oh, he did you know cut you've got this cut amazing up. selection of submissions that you can use. The only way you can get frustrated now is to throw like a gorilla. And get past it in some way. Now, even in this position, he can threaten ankle locks and stuff. But now, close guard, he's limited as to what he can do when it comes to fight finishing. It's all about ground and pound. Now we can see him working to a much more better Ain't going to come to new fruition, I can just tell you. Oh, he's trying to get me Kimura. Very nice there. He gets the grip. But in a half guard, Kimura in a half guard, forget about it. It ain't going to happen. Wasting your time, wasting your energy. You got you locked down, man. Unless you get all the way around him. Look, there's the bucks. And this round's done. He's you're trying to make it look good to the judges. I got him in a Kamor, see? Round's gonna end. I got him in a Kamor. Yeah, he does put a little cut on him. Different looking bulk up there. Yes, sir. Yo, check it out, man. Got the slow. This is, uh, see it's called Swax Lap. The same size and weight exactly as a lacrosse ball. Look, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. It's got a little, like a hacky sack. It's basically a large hacky sack. And it's like a nice pattern. You know, which is funny. It's the eyes of March. And look, it's got shame racks. I did not plan that. No, I didn't. It's just the flow flow. It was the only one on Amazon. Like a training lacrosse ball. It's literally the only one. I mean, I'm not even really fascinated with shame racks, but it is pretty. It's not necessarily a fight ending so, cup, but it does cause it a lot smells, of blood and so, it's very influential on like, judges' scorecards. Like cowhide, so I got this here. Lemon butter. Burt's Bees lemon butter. See that? I'm going to rub it in because I don't like this. Fabrizio oh, it smells Verdun, artificial. Showing like, signs of wear and tear, but so too is Alexander Polkov. 
as Verdun launches himself like a rocket across <laughs> the octagon. These guys are having a lot of fun. It, it, it must, must be strange for some people viewing that have never stepped in there and fought themselves, but you know, you, you can develop a good relationship with someone, a training partner, a sparring partner, and, and have common ground with them and want to see them succeed apart from when they're across the octagon facing you and then you've just got to put it on them. So even though there's a lot of laughing and some games going on and, and, and Vadoom trying to get inside his head, look at this! Oh, now there's some damage under Vadoom's eye. Oh yeah, he did him good on that Beautiful, one. Beautiful, sweet, look at that! Incredible work. Yeah, if he gets Vadoom in a triangle, I'll freak out on you. Nah. Vadoom nice. almost took his back, but he didn't. He's like sliding and sliding everywhere. Volkov. These guys are tired, man. Really impressed with the it's third round, right? No, we're, yeah, third, third round. No oh, look, his eyes shut. He's now dripping blood. Now we're seeing some, some bleeding from the eye yeah, of the dude from the cheekbone. And they're already tired as hell. And they keep wrestling the more, which means he's even more tired. Round, so we've got swelling above the eye now, as well as swelling on the cheekbone. That looks like oh, he got took down now. I think we're doing so tired. I seriously do. I think this is where this is it. This is where his 40 year old age is gonna show, and age don't mean nothing. I'm just saying, though, but you know. So I should just say, basically, this is where Verdun specifically is getting tired. He's 48, 48, he's got nothing to do Something that he's going after a lot, though, in this fight. Yeah. He's not very consistent. The only reason we get easily tired when we get to the 40s is just because we typically. Lose focus like younger athletes do. You know that's the only reason. But the 46-year-old Dan Henderson, you know, they could just last all night. You know the 80-year-old marathon runners, man. You know, some say man, he's don't mean nothing. And it reminds and me of the Yaya up. Rodriguez Frankie Edgar fight, yes. where the swelling caused the fight to be ended at the end of the second round because there was no, there was no visibility through that swelling for Yaya Rodriguez. Now, a, a, a veteran like Badu must know that there's a risk of this fight being stopped if that does swell shut. I wonder if that brings any kind of urgency to his game as that vision just might knock him out down. first. Well, a veteran like Alexander Volkov will also knock recognize him out, Rick. that knock he has only got one eye looking back at knock him, him out, and Volkov. he will be targeting the right side of Fabrizio Verdun. Oh, kicked him in the gut when he was tired. That's going to work. See, keep on that. Body hunt for a while, bro. He's tired, man. Nice shot to the Tome. He's going to be real hurt. I'm expecting another level change. A completely different strategy this time from Verdun, isn't it, Dan? From, I mean, we called that fight with Marcin Tabura. Oh, yeah, it was spinny, spinny. It's actually surprising that, that we don't see him chase the takedown and the submission more than he more than he, he does because, well, I mean, we know he's such a prolific grappler, but he's had such success with his striking uh, in recent years that he seems to have gravitated towards that more oh, nice than anything. Nice shot, Verdun. He just caught him right on the chinny chin chin. Try to take him down, no, no, again, now he's on top he, of you, I can't see the clock because I got my canvas sticker over Beautiful. it, oh well, he got his back, he got his back, not four hooks, just one hook, I don't think, oh, 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 nah, nothing doing that, you ain't going to submit this Russian man, he's good on the ground man, now he knows for sure, he almost stands back, and now he knows he's not going to get him, he just ain't going to catch him. That kind of uh, takedown to strangulation was against Wolf Harris, where he had no time to really game plan. He did that super quick. And there was definitely, you know, a vulnerability in Walt Harris's game. We know he's a big power puncher and he's a, a huge individual as well. But Badu had the technical advantage in that fight and decided to exploit it. But what we're seeing from Volkov here is the amount of experience and skill that he has that he brings into this heavyweight division. And you've got to think heavyweights around the world that are watching, that are ranked in the top ten, are looking at Volkov now and seeing someone that's going to be a mainstay in this division. Yeah. Not I knew after he fought Stefan like Struve, was Stefan was doing him nice, and then he just Here kept coming like a juggernaut. I'm telling you, this Russian, he's got a lot of heart, he's got a lot of steam, even though he's huffing and puffing, he, was still taller than me at nine he just keeps amazing. coming. I knew after that Stefan Struve fight, man, because I thought Stefan was going to take him out, and he did, he took Stefan out. 
Last few seconds. Oh, now he's just Badoom playing Badoom with him. Wants this fight on the floor. I really feel. Badoom has two rounds to go and he got nothing left, man. He got nothing left. I mean, now he's trying to like... Breathe. Just flop on the ground and try to floor him into his yeah, guard. Yeah, He's so three. tired. He three. can't even fight standing up no more. Nope, nope, nope. The only, the only option he has is to flop so down three. and hope that Volkov's going to jump in his guard and let me tell you something, he ain't going to do it. We lost this round. You let him, you let him stay on the shot too much. Stay firm. Let's train. You've got good legs. Work your jab. Work your jab. Work your jab. It's like, shut up. I'm tired. <laughs> so let's take a look at this. A much better round for Volkov, in my opinion. Tired. <laughs> Stinging with the jab and then follows up with a nice combination. So many these coaches, when they spaz on the fighters, I'm always like, man, seriously, all dude wants to do is grab a breath. He don't want to hear you tell him spaz it. Do this, do that, do this, do that, man. He's just trying to grab a breath and reset his damn brain. He got five minutes about that. And he's tired, man. He don't care about what he's about. He's trying to set between Verdum and Volkov. Number three versus number eight. Yeah, I know. It's be interesting. See, even when the doom like looks to step in and try and come over the top with the right hand, just Volkov sticking that jab out, stifles the move. Catch him with a right to the chin, 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 maybe. The Met Police might be on the phone to the UFC recruiting the battering brand of Alexander Volkov for a couple of morning raids. Oh yeah, yeah. nice yeah. street punch. One, two, lovely work there by Volkov. Oh, he's trying to take him down. No, he's trying to grab his leg. He might finish him on the ground. But Volkov is wise to it. He knows what Badoom's trying to do. Yeah. Whether he can stop him or not is a different question. What's that technique called? Is that kissing the dragon, Dan? Is that a technique? Is that... No? I'm not sure, John. Okay, I'm going to get called out for that. That's wrong. But it's a very crafty technique in which he takes the back. Now this is a different circumstance where you've got Volkov sitting in the guard of Vadoom with that long reach. You have to wonder whether he can punch Vadoom or whatever Vadoom being able to stop him. You nice huge shots there by Volkov. Finds power from his knees. Calls Vadoom back. Vertical. I think Vadoom's going in for his last big trade. That's what I'm thinking too. Here we go. He's down. <laughs> You are a big, big tree. I'm an even bigger, bigger ass. His win streak to six. Russian styley boy. With that stingray on his back. If that's what it is. Like that stingray man, from Russia, bro. You ain't got oceans, man. It was almost like Badoom knew that he was in your last opportunity. His last chance to throw Maybe some shots. For me, he threw everything that he had, was like, but like Volkov was just outside of his range, was able to sting him with some clean shots, you, and sent Badoom, the former heavyweight champion, crash into the so, canvas. It was a galley in tempo for both of them, but a change of the guard has happened tonight. Do Let's take a look at this. So Volkov in the guard, punches down, lands two clean right hands, oh. and then gets back to his feet. He calls Vadoom up. And, and then, as soon as they were back to the feet, there was a trade. Oh, it was an uppercut to the temple. Came off the Usually the uppercut had the nice jaw, but he got, he was like, to the, floor and to the temple. Ball, big shot to switch the lights off. Oh, it was really first to the jaw, then to the temple, and, and then when he's the, on the ground, the it was just one bow, and for doing was like, uh, the rise, and you it will was be a, a true ground KO. I mean, they're going to call it a TKO. Because the KO is yeah, the usually on the feet, back, fall. Rolling, but and then it was that's a ground over. KO when he's on the, the ground, you go back, and his head go, oh, the you know, KO, he, he got sits. knocked out. He becomes a true contender for the world heavyweight title. Wonder if Doom going to think Classy about retiring, the victory as well, going over. That, like Giving I said before a fight, I don't know if these were with me or round one, but Let's I said, John, this is going to be your boy's retirement fight, maybe. Official. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, see, see, to see to this contest with your 237. 38 seconds of round number four. You're playing the winner by... Sometimes the little eye knows better than the big guy. Drago Volkov! And that 
that was, ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Volkov. Oh, he did you the cross, a man. Here I think we got a Russian division. Christian, yo. That must mean a lot to you to get Maybe a winner over a champion Russian. like Badu. Ты смог сегодня сделать настоящее заявление своей победы. Хочешь ли ты браться за чемпионство дальше? Скажи о своих планах. Hello, Wanda. Thank you for your surprise here today. Of course, of course, it was a great win. A big respect to my opponent, Fabrizio Vero, he's a great guy, a legend of our sport. But I'm coming right now. I'm waiting for the title shot. Maybe it will be next fight, who know? I will wait for, for this, and I'm here for this. So talk me through yes, your approach you to this fight. You were a, a training partner of the Doom. You knew him very well, so you must have had a good idea of what you needed to do to win tonight. Скажи мне, ты когда ты готовился вместе с Фабрисио и подходя к этому бою, ты знал какие-то вещи, когда вы тренировались вместе, оно тебе помогло? Uh, yes, of course, it's helped me a little bit, but for sure, I know that uh, his jiu-jitsu is very good, and I work a lot about defense from jiu-jitsu, from his submission, waiting he will tire, and uh, just waiting for my moment, and our plan uh, works. So we just defend, 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 and then attack. It's work. Now, obviously, you're you were ranked number eight before this fight. That's going to change after this fight. You'll be climbing up the rankings. Is there anybody in the heavyweight division that you would like to see across the octagon next time? Теперь очевидно, когда ты подвинулся вверх, ты хочешь назвать имя кого ты хочешь увидеть следующим своем бою против тебя? Doesn't matter who it will be. Uh, I want that it will be a title shot. Maybe it can be. Maybe Miocic. Who knows? But I'm here. Well, it was a great performance. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for your main event winner, Alexander Drago Volkov. Drago means that dragon. Like Maybe that stingray is like some kind of this version of it. Ocean UFC dragon. I don't know. EA Sports UFC 3 on sale now for a limited time on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. All right. So I'm gonna jump into the, the next fight. Pause this. Minimize this. Like I said, you know, I haven't seen any of the tonight's fights, so I'm going backwards. Instead of starting with the fight pass, I'm starting with the main event and now going to the co main event. Oh Jimmy Manawa, number four late heavyweight versus Jan Blackwick. Number 11 light heavyweight. Right? Jimmy's the poster boy, 17 and 3. That's a damn good record. Got him against Jim Blackwick, and he's 21 and 7. So number 4 against number 11. Jimmy, he got a nice, he's a good fighter. He was coming up real fast. And then um, Gustafson stopped him in his flow. And then he started coming up again. And then that, that Swiss guy, he got a weird name, I don't even remember. DC just gassed him out, outlasted his initial on set because he was worried about KO and DC in the first round. And why are you pre planning a flow? A martial art combat experience is a flow. You cannot pre plan it. Because if you do, well, your chances go way down because, man, things just change. You got to be able to adapt if you're set in your ways about what you're going to do. And he does something different when you expect. That's the flow flow. And really, you could say that about anything in life. Because I'll take someone who's got flow flow over someone who's got a crazy plan, well planned out. I mean, you want to find a little bit of both. I mean, actually, you want a lot of flow flow and a little plan plan. I'll get into that later. We're doing UFC stuff right now. Okay, so here we go. Watch. Watch. And bam. And bam. Jimmy Manuel versus Jan Blachowicz. This is a rematch. Bam. That has I don't even know if so this is recorded. Me, you know I mean? One time. Uh, yeah, because that's a camera. And I'm looking at the screen. So yeah, why not, right? right? Because when I changed if screens think, before... He doesn't want that to go to put a song to make that a story course yeah, to it's make that a cool. and you can hear yeah, so let's do it this is a guy who lives to knock fighters out and he a heavy hitter Jimmy Manoa and he from England by the way 
Jimmy Manuel is a fighter who's made his whole career out of fights like Corey Anderson, OSP, left hooks that leave giant fighters on their backs. Yeah, he got a lot of power, this guy. He's a real, uh, real muscular guy, and I always say, you know, all that muscles require a lot of energy. In life, not just in fighting, you remember getting bullied. In the Manuel fight, he got bullied. Manoa took the center. Oh, they already fought around, before he got landed does. big punches. He was always in control of that fight. Bahovic got bullied the yeah, entire time. Yes, he did. That stings. So Bahovic, to fight. his part, wants that fight back. How many times do you get a shot at somebody who bullied you? That is yeah. an adult fantasy. That is huge for him. I just Not was just talking career, about this with Demetrius Johnson. Because that, that little midget there. pisses me off. Because he took it. He got ragged all by Jimmy get on your bike, Dominic Cruz, in the WEC. The first guy I and now he's got, what, 10 title defenses, little midget, mi midget Mighty Mouse? Why he didn't call Dominic Cruz out and be like, man, you ragged out me back in the day. I'm the champ now. You was the champ. Let's do it. Because he's scared, that's why. Both guys walk Little midget talking about, why they don't pay me as much as they pay these other guys? Because you're just a little midget, dude. You weigh 125 pounds. No one wants to see your little midget ass with your big Nephilim dome. You know, your head just like as big as a, a dang uh, blown up balloon. No one wants to see you spaz out with your little spaz emotions, man. We want to see the Some size. Max means Max. How are you going to see a little midget class? To the idea that he's a UFC he don't pay me to see. He's still 500 now. grand for a fight, dude. He's crying about. I want you know, $3 million, man. Really, really little damn whiner. To get that finished, have a, a good performance, then lock that fight Dominic Cruz and then come talk. It just took some time for him to kind of really realize what it takes for him to be a UFC fighter. We all right, so I'm a fast the forward. UFC, these guys are just an getting their clothes like off and all that. And as soon as he got to the UFC... All right, here we go. About to call Jimmy Mano out, uh, looks like. Everybody's going to go nuts, because like I said, co-main event, and this is Britain. Home of the blindness. Is it blindness? He's real looking calm. He's looking real calm. Jimmy Manua looks to correct the only decision on his record tonight. And he aims on rectifying that with a At least it's not one of them names that were really like. For my liking, he seemed a little bit aggressive, a little bit more aggressive this like, week down through fight week. Like Hawaii. And to that, he loves a London event. You know, he about to get beat by Brian Ortega. He just loves making this sure walk. enough, I'm telling you. His home blessed, Max Holloway. I mean, blessed. Like, what, you, what are you picture, saying? Like, like I'm more blessed bit. than I mean, you? I mean, it's a little I mean, bit like cocky. I think. Really he looks very aggressive. He looks fired up. Because he's annoyed so that he's going back boy. over this I don't same know ground. That, he's that annoyed is. that he has to face Yan again because he lost to Ozdemir. He's been putting a holding pattern in the light heavyweight division, which he needs to break out of. Now, let's talk about his keys to victory. That's that Swiss boy, Ozdemir. I thought he had a weird name. Ozdemir. He got he's knocked out by Ozdemir. He's in a particular spot so he can land it cleanly. Now, he's very good at putting people there, but he's got to make sure that the opponent's going to have a different space. Damn, man. Muscular, the other thing he's going to do is use knees in the clinch. Like we saw perfectly. him in his debut against Carl Kingsbury. He's you got know, an excellent side clinch. With perfect big, and all that big comes down. And then the left hook oh, is the funny shot. But Jimmy Mano, that's the thing that puts people to sleep. I don't need no more of this stuff. That's what he's looking like for tonight. Take the half a little pouch of it. Just to get some caffeine. Got breakfast. caffeine in it. Vivian I don't like to drink coffee. For battle. Makes me go take a cup of piss every day in the house. Get a little pink house with a caffeine. Just put a little bit of that caffeine bang right in me. All the way through, just felt like everything was in slow motion. Same kind of feeling he had against Anthony Johnson, that things just weren't firing. He needs to get in that flow state. And flow state. I don't know what it is flow about state. fighting in London for Jimmy, but he finds himself in that flow state a lot quicker when he steps in the octagon. And here's these people.
going to make this a lion's den tonight. Jimmy, the poster boy, Manua. Let's take a look at the co-main tail of the tape then. 38-year-old yeah, Londoner Manua is 6 foot 1. 35-year-old Polish fighter Wachowicz is Polish. an inch taller at 6 foot 2. The inch and a half reach advantage lies with the home so I'm basically fighter Manua. Now with the official announcement, between Jimmy here's and Bruce Jane, I'm 6 foot 1 and a half and he's 6 2 and Jimmy's 6 foot 1. Ladies and gentlemen, he's in my size. this is the 200 pounders, but of course... Of 205 evening. pounders, but this you know, on the night of the fight, probably weigh like about 230, which is 100 kg, 100 kilograms. So these are my size, these guys, but they muscular, and I'm not. I don't even have no muscles. And I like it like that. Because I can go all day, I can go all night, 24 7. And my muscles aren't like, feed me, feed me, feed me. But that's just my style. Lee. And if you don't want to be all muscled up, hey man, whatever works. If it works, it works. Yep. He looks nice and relaxed, y'all. He looks real relaxed. Okay, so I'm gonna call right here. This is gonna be Jimmy. Manoa. I'm not, I don't know if it's going to KO him, yeah, maybe. I don't think so. I, I, I don't know. I mean, but I'm just feeling like if he didn't KO him last time, then maybe this this Polish guy just ain't the type that gets KO. Even though Jimmy can hit hard. I just, I'm just saying, that's going to go all three rounds. in the red. Wavich in the chalk. Jimmy's looking Last to take him out though. Have been it's kind of Don't be intimidated, Polish boy. For That's why people love him, John, because of that style of fighter that he has. He's a big risk taker. He's a gambler in there. He likes to test nice. himself against everybody it's else nice when it comes jab, to that fisticuffs. Poor boy got. At oh, the nice. moment, Jan Wachowicz is using a lot of feints to try He's and got find nice his way jab, popping Jimmy out Manuel that jab. Patient, waiting for his opportunity. He's Manuel focused in this pole. Has achieved performance bonuses in the last two UFC oh, appearances now. at the O2. Jab super quick. And when Working down at the All Stars. Uh oh, with Jimmy's swinging for the fences. Oh, he's swinging. He better be careful. He's gonna get caught with a swing many like other that. High level guys. Swinging wide. And when you've got punching power like Jimmy Manuel, you can hold the center of the octagon on presence. Oh, he don't kick him in the chin. Jimmy Manuel, oh, took it to the body. Jimmy yeah. kicked him to the chin. Jimmy knows what to expect. You can see that he's he's given he's oh, given that's a big Jimmy all the respect he deserves because of that punching power. But it's almost like he's this trying to get Jimmy to swing hard, so he can nuts. counter. Not like the that rolling that on the ground. The last one. In front of this crowd, wanted he's to deliver that big knockout. Means that he's very Someone difficult to pick shots. Down, it's very difficult to yeah, flow wrong. and to relax. Because when you're a I think he just caught him. You throw that big Camera angle is bad, and but this, he caught him. Because Jan acknowledged it. Like what Jan is expecting of like Jimmy you Mano. caught me. You Slip caught his me. head out of the way and counter when he loses his balance. He did tell me at breakfast the other morning that all the pressure is on Manua. And interestingly, Dan Knight, you have seen Oh, yeah. Come on, Jan. Come on, Paul. Nobody's intimidated here. So the general. Andreas Michael has taken many, many looks at Jan Wachowicz. Jimmy's got a lot of pressure on him. He keeps pushing him up against the fence, but Jan keeps circling out. Oh, that's a heavy leg kick. Jimmy done gave him two heavy leg kicks. Expect that low kick to be followed up by a left hook. It's one of his signature moves. To the body. Jan's still, though, coming. His own yeah, kick. confident, though. Yeah. Training now the new Careful, we got to do one of these Daniel shots. Is good. Anchor, Martin Tibura, also pro boxers that are doing really big things in their game. Square it up. They know it's squared up, yo. Someone looking for something. He prepares for a massive they know they're the very team. even, these two. Leapfrog his way into Jans. at least the top ten, Jans. maybe the top five. 
both right handed. Oh, Jimmy's swinging. Oh, he got caught. Jimmy got caught. Oh no, Jimmy's gonna get knocked out. No, he's wrestling with him. He's swarming. He's going for that choke again. Be careful. Be careful. Jimmy's gonna shake out the cobwebs. Jimmy almost got knocked out. Uh oh. He's, he's still dazed, his nose is bloody. He called with Jeb. Jeb, the Poli messing around. The Polish corner is animated. They can feel that the victory is within hand. Oh, he's go, he going for it. Oh, Jimmy's wobbly. He's weak. I think it might be over soon. He's trying to take him down. Don't mind going to take Jimmy down. He got a minute and 25. Come on, Jimmy, you can last. Uh oh. Jan's tired. He's huffing and puffing. They reset him. Beautiful work here. Short chopping shots in the clinch. Manoa's trying to clear his head, trying to get some oxygen in his lungs. Yep. Everybody clear. Keeping pressure on Merciless with his time. These are big guys. I need a lot of oxygen. Oh, the muscles. He just clenched up. Oh, he can't sit there. He's clenched up. I take this here can and get a level change. I gotta see the clock. Like oh, wait, wait. He Here we go. He's squaring up. Something might happen. Could it end before the first round? Oh, he must jab, Jim. Jimmy got it back. Jimmy got, he got a second win, it looks like. I think he recovered. He recovered. Jimmy's gone. He's put pressure on him. Oh, yeah. Jimmy's calling him in now. Jimmy's. Be careful. We died, though. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. Oh my god, this is awesome. Jimmy, he's messing around. I think, oh yeah, round two. Oh my god. Ooh, the mola. Jimmy almost got knocked down, but he got it all back now. And he does not. He now he got a whole minute to rest. You all might think, oh man, that's not a lot of rest. It's enough for you. When you're in I real good three, shape, three, 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 real three, good shape. These combat fighters are in way, way better shape than most athletes. Really good work for Blahovic there, using good head movement. Switch his stance to southpaw. Still not up to poke the standards, left. but I, I mean, I don't mean to say that in a negative way. I'm just saying the pressure from it is what it is. Catching him and knocking him off balance, then following him. I got all them muscles. He circled to look for the back to try and get that rear naked choke in. But Manuel cleared his head and got back to his feet. But what a beautiful first round for Jan Here we go, we're starting it up, guys. I'm happy. Fire and open. The referee, Leon Roberts, clears the octagon. Here we go. Readying the two fighters. Jimmy, what you gonna do? Everybody's watching. You worried about that? I think his face says. You ready to fight? Bring it on. I don't know. Here we go. Has he had enough time to clear his head down? That's the question, John. Wow, just more than double the strikes. Oh, he picked him up like the head. And not only did he land the numbers, Jim's but he landed the power. Strikes. His kick went back. Now he's got now he's got Jimmy's attention. Come on, get your now jab. Jimmy's a little more pop, cautious pop, moving pop forward. Pop jab. But he knows that one punch left hook can change everything. And so does Yannick. Chopping low kick, low calf kick. Gonna slow Jimmy Manuel's movement down. Rahovic gone back to his original team that helped him get to the UFC. Good jabs by the ball. Keep him at bay. Nice intervals. Every time Jimmy about to, he just about stops him. Nice. He got that timing. Uh oh. Oh, oh he went to the body. That hurt the ball. Beautiful kick. Paul took him down. Look at that elevation. Jimmy got right back up. What a fight we have here in our coma. Oh, he almost caught him, Jimmy did. He's swing wow. The bloody the battered face of Jimmy Manoa is not discouraged him from moving forward. Yes, and Jimmy is popping out his jab. Yeah. Through drops of blood right now. Always dangerous. Jimmy's ready. He just Huge caught him. He caught him. There, almost from underground. Oh, here's the left hand. 
Oh, Gene, stop. Gene's getting real tired now. I think Jimmy's about to do him, you guys. No, no, he looks tired. That Polish, he spent a lot when he tried to knock Jimmy out. I think Jimmy's going to do him, you guys. Let's see how much profit I got in me. I think Jimmy's going to do him. Ready for this? You ready for this? Here we come. Here we come. Here we go. Oh, oh boy. He barely missed that one. Try to take him down. They clinched up. Now they're going to reset because they're going to huff and puff. A little blood drippy drippy. Instead of Sasha, I got a butterfly on my shoulder. He got a little blood, blood, drippy, drippy on his shoulder. Oh, Jimmy going to the gut with his knees. That's going to pay dividends, as they say. They are so tired. They are taking a rest, and I don't blame them. These are big guys, y'all. Most definitely. Mouth's open, which means it's also easier to knock him out with an open mouth. Nice. Full sweep. But Yannick jumps on the team. guys back. No, Jimmy just reversed it. They're about to go up to the feet again. How much time? A minute. This is a great fight. The very best of light heavyweight action going down under the roof. Jimmy's pulling out pressure. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is very different from the first fight. This is like 15 Manuel seconds. Bullied Wojevich when they first met. He forced him back. No. Minute 15 seconds. Both fights are slowing down now. Now Jimmy's starting to threaten a little bit with that lead leg. Oh, that was a nice check. Very nicely done. That stinks, doesn't it? That really does stink. Jimmy's got him against the fence, but he's not... Cole's not circling this time, he's just staying up against the fence, so I think he might get caught. That's not good tactics. Now they're in the middle of the rink again. Everyone on the edges of their seats. Man, that ref is so dialed in. He's loving it. Oh, Jimmy hit, kicked him. He's dizzy. Jimmy's gonna finish him, maybe. Oh no, he's still got power. Jimmy. Oh god, these guys are not. Everybody's getting harder than knockout. Well, not everybody. Luke Rock Holmes. Little chinny chin chin. Little chinny. Here we go, y'all. Round three coming up. These guys, man, they're getting fighting in the night. I don't know, it's the second fight, but look at I mean, usually heavyweights go at it like this. That's gonna be 50 grand. If you're gonna stand up, he's gonna punch you. She's okay? Everything okay? Another really interesting round from these two. Yannick invested in that jab, but Jimmy Manoa starting to edge forward a little bit. He took, got taken down one time, scrambled back to his feet, and then the next two takedown attempts were, de were defended by Jimmy. He still took some shots, though, but Yannick was still in there Let's looking go. for the back. Great scrambles, very Let's evenly matched in that second round. Thank you. Right back. Third, Come on. final round here in London. The poster boy. Jimmy Manuel, so much better from with the lemon butter. Of this city, All that taking on the Polish warrior. Chemical. How high is smell? I don't like that. Oh, it smells good now. Yeah. just outside the top 10 at number 11. Will those rankings remain the same after this battle? Very important. Four minutes and 45 seconds. They look pretty well reset, you guys. I think they got their second or third win. 
for Pajovic to get one back over him. Still love that last though. Nice lead body kick and a couple of jabs from Yang. Usually your second or third win, it don't last as long as your Still first win. Still trying to win. stick to his game plan, he's looking... Oh! Oh, oh, he, oh my god! The power! The power! Hides the jab so well does, uh, does Bajovic. Yeah, that's a good jab. There it is again, just stings right Very to the cheekbone. Sad. Oh, that's another good jab there from Manuel as well. Jimmy really wants to knock this dude out for his fans and everything. Oh, oh no! Jimmy, Yannick please die, though. This guy is going to catch you. Beautiful again. Manuel through the overhand. Yannick slips away and counts it. Nice check again. The inside low kick. 76 total strikes for Bajovic. 37 for Manuel. They're the strikes that have landed. Got similar percentages of success with those numbers. Jim, see, Jimmy's not using his jab a great deal, which means that, it, that the strike, the, the power strike that he throws is more easy to read, a bit more predictable. Whereas Yannick's constantly breaking Jimmy's rhythm with that jab and the low kick. Beautiful low kick check again from Yannick. Oh boy. Manuel gets that left leg up quick. Bajovic has to be very careful about his guard. Really good. I think Jimmy's going to try and come over the top next time Yannick jabs. Looks like he's trying to bait that jab to me so he can fall over the top. Trick Adele style. Just missing with that wide right. left hook, Jimmy is. Manuel looking to engineer an opening for his big left hook or left high kick. But Bajovic, very much the man with more Oh, he's coming now. Oh boy, he's huffing now. Nice straight left. Just threw a nice kick, kick but he's huffing. Nice jab, though. Absolutely brilliant, isn't it? From it the, is very good. From the Jimmy's putting a lot of pressure on him. Oh, he just head kicked him. Kick to the body. body kick. He went to his shoulder. Yeah, coming back with counter punches on the guts and hooks. It's the story of the game plan today for him. I think Jimmy going in for the kill. And again, beautiful. He's getting Wait, caught right when he's about to throw his super duper blast. The pole catches him in the chin chin with a jab. Oh, oh, here he, it is again. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah. Double jab cross. Everything is set out by that jab. Pole's real bench. dialed in, you guys. He's really catching nice. Jimmy back, back, back. back. The head movement of Manuel very much restricted in this third round. He's finding himself on the end of that long jab of Bajovic. <sighs> nice movement. Set to the outside of that again from Bajovic. Manuel now not quite with the same kind of spring in his step that he had in the first round. Oh man, this guy, this pole man. He is not getting bullied Bajovic this time though, no, that's for sure. Yep, yep, yep. He is most definitely, yeah, definitely. But the problem is, John, that Bajovic knows what Jimmy's looking for because the big left hook is the story of his game. So that means that, that there's a lot less for Yannick to consider, whereas Jimmy has got to consider the body kicks and the hooks and the uppercuts and possibly a takedown attempt as well. A little more variety in Jimmy's game would make the left hook easier to land. He got the truth. Jimmy's throwing 75 headshots, only 19 have landed. Easy, easy to read what Jimmy's going to do, I mean. Success rate with those headshots. He, so he yes, Danny's going not up much of a faker. He's finding that target. Martial R faker. Oh. Clash in the centre of the octagon. Swelling now to the uh, left eye of Jimmy Manuel. Lots, lots, lots him as well. Oh, Jimmy got taken down. This is not good for decision purposes. If Jimmy stays on his back for the rest of the round, twenty seconds. Okay, well that's not really that significant. Really happy in this position here, counting down the seconds. Last ten. Manuel flat on his back. Really disciplined work by Jan Bajovic. And that is the end of the contest. The Polish corner, raw with excitement. What a brilliant This is, might be a was. split decision. Because see, it's in Britain. A standing and the home guy usually, like, you know, so, so, yeah, he usually gets the nod. Work, 
Finding those backward movements. Jam knocked those Jimmy down in the first round. Jimmy, Jimmy knocked Jam in, down in the second round. As he was reaching round. for that left hook. Makes it a little bit Jimmy down, took Jimmy just down to but just for a split second. So he can land those but shots Jimmy and flurry forward. Put the pressure on Jan, push him up against Jimmy the fence the whole second, time. It's not sure whether so it's like octagon control the versus punches, this versus that. The That's how the judges through. think. Fair play to Yannick for being I don't able to even think three judges kick. should be in and charge of who won the fight. I think, and Jimmy and I think was all was eight, eight billion of us should be able to just go, beep, he won, beep, he won. And then the beast system, the AI computer just goes, bam, does the mathematics. And then we decide who won. I mean, is that the way it should be? Yes, of course. It is. In this rematch, but seemed to finish they want to control, you know, we who wins. To see how the decisions for money purposes. You know, how much bets were placed on him versus him. And we don't want to lose. You know, the house don't want to lose more than it needs to. Way more significant strikes, almost doubling the efforts of Jimmy Manuel was Wachowicz. And that's head striking accuracy, much better for the Polish fighter. He also landed two takedowns. So Ooh, really, wow. I don't you will. These fight statistics, I don't buy into the them. Cards I think that might just together. be a way to they fake people out. If I was to go Let's back and do my own fight statistics, I bet I don't come up with them numbers. Ladies and nope, gentlemen, nope. after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest 29-28. 29-28 and 30-27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Jan Wachowicz! Gave it to the poll. Crowd don't like it, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for these two warriors. What a battle that was. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, let's have a few words with you, my friend. I think I saw you signaling the third round there. I think we're going to get a rubber match, right? That's one each now. He had the hometown advantage this time, and you took the victory the first time. You had the hometown advantage, and he took the victory. Now we need, what, an even stage at Vegas or something for a big final fight? Of course. I'm, I can do this in the next fight. No problem for me. I don't choose opponent. Jimmy also, his true warrior. Support him. So talk to me about this performance because it was very calculated. You knew what you wanted to do. You had a game plan and you stuck to it. What was that game plan? Game plan was different a little bit. I, uh, coach told me more deep takedowns. Yeah, I tried. I take them only one time. So game plan was a little bit different. But uh, my boxing do better than Jimmy boxing. So oh. I want the fight. I want. I want thanks all England for support Jimmy and me a little bit. And of course, I want to thank all Polish fans who are here. Thank you. Dziękuję Polacy, że tu jesteście, wspieracie nas. Without a doubt, the biggest win of your career. Do you now look to move on past Jimmy and start to find one of those top five fighters, or do you think you want to rerun this one more time? Like I said before, I never choose opponent. I'm ready for everyone. But now I, I have three fights very close, so now I want a little break, little vacation. So now, a few months break. Well, I think you deserve it. Especially with that 50 grand, y'all might be getting yeah, too. That well, vacation. All right. 50 grand guns so a long way. Congratulations <laughs> to Jan Wachowicz and his team. What a rematch that was. Will y'all are third? with me, but I got to go do a compass. Just chill for a minute. Victory. Coming up next, the main event of the evening, sponsored by EA Sports UFC 3, become the GOATs in the best UFC game ever made. EA Sports UFC 3 on sale now for a limited time on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. is Marvin Arch located between the famous Oxford Street, Park Lane and Edgware Road Junction right here in London. Everything it was part of Buckingham Palace but was relocated to its current location. So much to see here in beautiful London, England. Back to fighting matters. This is UFC Fight Night, Verdum versus Volkov and we have reached the main event.
freaky deeky. Let's go to the heavyweight rankings for All the three freaky deeky, freaky deeky, freaky deeky. Which is sponsored deaky, deaky, deaky. by EA Sports UFC 3. Becoming yeah. the best in the best UFC game ever made. EA Sports UFC Turn 3 on sale now bit. for a limited time on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Two of the baddest men on the planet who currently sit at number three and number eight on the rankings are all set for battle, Dan. And what a huge opportunity this is for right. the rising prospect, so uh, Alexander Volkov, to add one of the biggest mouse? names to oh, his record go. that he could ever possibly Stop add this here. in his heavyweight division. Former heavyweight champion Just for Chris Yoko, who at the moment. Minimize this. All right. That was... Now... Who's next? Okay. Bantamweight. So that's uh what's been a weight? 135 pounds, you little little dudes. Man, these must be good little dudes to be number three on the roster. Let's just see. Tom Du Canoy and Terry On Ware. Yo, I'm just warning you right now, I might not watch this whole thing because these little dudes they, they just don't really do it. Sometimes, you know, they could be entertaining. You know, Cody Garbrandt and his KO power. Well, yeah, well, you know, and the new guy. What's his name? I don't remember. Sorry, dude, I just don't remember. Yet. All right, so here we go, Ray. Which one is it? Okay, okay so one, two, three. Watch. No. That's the wrong one. Go back again. Go back again. Oh, oh man. What are you doing now, dude? What's a damn live stream, man? Come on, man. Here we go. This is what I want. This is what I want. I believe I'm be the best in the world. Yeah, okay, so. Okay, here we go back to these little dudes. Where you at? Okay, this one. Here we go. Ready? Bam. In tonight's print sensation, Tom Dukenwa has never go. shied away from a fight in the octagon. Tom and he will keep that reputation intact tonight as he squares off with Terry on Ware, a California veteran seeking his first win. One of France's top mixed martial arts Oh, got a little froggy froggy. Tom Dukenwa made his name on the European Jump, froggy scene, jump. Thrilling fans with his exciting style and flashy finishes. Now a member of the UFC roster, the Van Dam Dukenwa split. is back in Europe and Do seeking a Van to deliver another and a Van Dango. performance Van when he squares off with Terry on Wear. Fresh from hard-fought scraps with Cody Stamen and Sean O'Malley, the well-rounded Californian veteran is no stranger to facing hot prospects, and he's eagerly anticipating his chance to play spoiler tonight. Coming up next, Terry right, let's give these guys a chance, okay? So we'll go ahead and maximize this now that I've decided to watch it. Fast forward a little bit. As well, trying to really create an uncomfortable environment. Fast forward a little bit more. And his ability to place those elbows right on the chin and then roll his head out to see the glare. And they're both happy to take shots. A little bit more. A really, really hot a little bit more. Fighting! A little bit more. And with the action begins, our referee in charge, Red. Alright, we're about to jump Bob it off. Stay in the weights. With the two Part fighters. Three. Thank you very oh, much, baby. Carly. Round number one ahead. Signaling that we are all set. Possible maximum. You ready? You ready? Let's fight. Bantamweight action. Dukawa is in the black. Flash where is in the chalk. Oh, that's like Big it. opening low kick there from the fire kit. Kick oh. this camp in front, Dan. Lovely combination. These guys are herky jerky, like I said, 135 pounds. Really These little person guys, to read. Like you can see his jerky, jerky, in his jerky. Good footwork, Not like big good guys, just like a chill. Well, giving his opponent several just different looks. Makes it count. You can see there's a, a bit of a caution in Terry and Weir's approach here. Chins down, hands are up. It's like just any animal. The smaller they are, the more spaz they are. And then the bigger the animal, the more chill they are. You know, of course, there's exceptions to rules in life. They're always are. And you got your sloth, he ain't really big or small, and he all he does is just sloth. Anyway, alright. Nice light kicks. French, you got a guy. Nice light kicks. Nice jab. 
Looks of movement from the fire kid, as I was saying. Swiss so stance is nice. Like I said, but make sure your left hand just screws your right hand Jackson like lacrosse. As well in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now his left hand. Oh, okay. I really like how Tom Dukenwar just walks his way into range. He's got such a confident way too. of fighting. You'll even start to see him reach a little bit. Oh, he's, he's a low, low leg kick. Top, he's a like John typical Jones fly was doing leg. Against he's Evans. a cap kick. But this, you know, it's just that constant fluid style. I mean, what stance is he? Is he southpaw? Is he orthodox? Oh, there's is he another one. Is he moving one. forward? Is he moving he's gonna be side? Am I expecting a jab or a low Maybe. kick? It's, just, it's beautiful to see someone with such heads. unusual but comfortable movement. I think they saw that when they were sizing him up. He's, look how little he has skinny twig legs. legs. I'm going to take his really calf out. His hip into it. A very much a Thiago Alves kind of drop on that uh, that heavy kick. But I mean, you can see some of the redness on his face. He is taking shots. He does take risks in these fights. And, and a guy like Terry and Wade, oh, yeah, who, he can one. hang back. He can endure and he can take a lot of shots. At some point, he'll see that window of opportunity. And if Duke and Watt leaves himself open, where will take it? Yeah, it's Duke and Watt, he's it's real interesting to watch. What's one of the best counters? A big, I like the French fighters, cross. to be honest with you. Jerome LeBanner is one of my favorite Banner fighters. Mobility, Jerome LeBanner, Sam Greco yeah, from Australia. Nice man, when them two fought, yeah. oh man, the I was in those springs in his back pockets. <laughs> oh, watch that, that's from... Uh, <laughs> Early glory, er, I'm sorry, early uh, K1 days. Sam Greco hits. versus Jerome LeBan. Go watch that, man. You'll love it. Oh, nice body shot from Terry and Weir there. I'd like to see him go back to the low kicks and try and slow down this. Oh, beautiful shit across the back of the head, but Weir just trucks it up like it was nothing. 24 professional fights for Weir. This his quarter century bouts. He's, in his career, he's faced UFC vets like Joe Soto and Luke Sanders, as well as Sean O'Malley and Cody Stamen inside the octagon. So he's had a really tough road to tonight. Oh, moving to the back nicely. Good balance from where to get a foot to the floor. It was. Oh, lovely one two there by the fire kid who then switches stances. Another thing that's worth noticing with both of these guys, you can see how relaxed they are in comparison to, let uh, say, Peter Sabota in our last fight. It was very tense, very, you know, really trying to put power into all of his shots. Whereas because these guys are so relaxed, th there are two benefits to it. One, it disguises your movement. But two, it also means that you ride punches so well. You, know, you take a shot, if your muscles are relaxed, your head will turn, your body will absorb the power. If you're tense, you take that shot and you will crumble underneath that pressure. And it's interesting you should oh. note that, Dan, because Ware believes that he overexerted himself against O'Malley and was a little spent. So he feels like he made some small errors, which he's going to correct tonight. You know, I would say he did the same thing against Cody Stamen as well. He got caught overreaching. You know, he was outpointed in that fight, even though he was he was pushing forward for the majority of it, purely because he was, he was leaving himself exposed when he was throwing those big shots. Let's take a look at one of the more prominent weapons for Dukinwa. 14 leg kicks. I think there's three on the other side. 14 calf kicks. I'm really surprised this guy's not looking yet. He only oh, takes, nice. he's only takes like three or four of them calf kicks and the guy's hurt. hurt, hurt, hurt. hurt. Hook to the chin by Tom oh, nice body nice punch. Work. Terror. Where? This is where the durability of Terry and Ware starts to come into play. Beautiful. Look at that. Very nice. Look, 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 got him down. He got him. Half a mount. Straight away, we're looking for openings to strike. See, this is, where he looks like, this is where he looks like the bigger man, John. Do you know what I mean? When he's in that top position, he can rain down strikes. What a fast paced first round. All right, guys. I don't expect any huffing and puffing out of these two. The tiny little bodies. <laughs> So take a look at this, we've got uh, uh, Tom Dukenwall moving forward, chopping into that low kick as the, the exclamation point on the end of that sentence. Really nice work. Unfazed at the moment is Terry and Ware, but you've got to think as the later this fight gets, the more those those legs will start to hurt. I would expect him to start looking for that takedown again because he was caught with some clean shots in that round, and this was nice work. Picked up a single leg and then kept a hold of the ankle as Dukenwall tried to bail out and immediately got to work. That's a 10 second warning, we are all about set for round number two from London.
Terry on Flashware, Tom Firekid, Duque Noir. Here we go, you ready? There we go, reset, Let's nice fight. minute rest, and see what goes on. Touch him up, round number two. The finish of that first round's got to give nice Terry Noir the confidence that Again, he has calf, a second game to the inside of Beautiful work there, body kick from Tom Duque Noir. They're so scrappy, these two. I, I knew this was going to be a, a, a contender for fight of the night. And the other thing, then, the mixed martial arts is, is a real web, and you oh, need as many kit. threads as possible. These guys Man, showing that, that they have that artillery. Definitely. Calf can't take too many cut kicks like that. Sensitive calf muscles, you know? Long, nice stringy long muscles. Shots there from where just... Who like might people just damage him things. You know. But where he might be able to land that power hand. Blood can't flow, nice throw. Start like hurting, swelling. Now, isn't it, Dan? He does just to come to the rescue and make it inflamed. Slowing down a little bit now. People we start actually discussed this yesterday, John. I do feel like Duke Bois' best work will be upper weight class. I, I, I do think that uh, at this weight class, he just he pushes himself too much. And I think once he gets, once he grows a bit, he ages a bit, and his body grows. I think we'll see we'll see him really come into his prime. Whereas Terry and Weir, this is a comfortable weight class for him. Even though he fought up in his UFC debut, this is the weight class for him. And, and you can see he's, he's happy keeping a, a consistent pace on his opponent here. He's now the one pushing the pace. He's the one with the majority of the octagon behind him, giving him the control. Duke Noir was a two-weight champion for Bama. Oh, another cap kick. Before he came over to the UFC, so yes, he Count does have, man. It's like 12, have Another one. Away. Again, loving this work. This yeah, is really a real tough calf. And they're on the same left leg. combinations with that low kick. Nice work with the left hook as well. The, the sharp right hand and the left hook are also finding a hold, but there's been no power in them at the moment that seems to have concerned Terry and Webb. Terry and Webb jockeying Duque Noir into position where he can maybe remove oh, some of that mobility. And Mike gets out to the centre of the octagon. Beautiful oh, combination on the inside from Terry and Webb. He seems to be having more success there. I just think his confidence is on the rise and all of this erratic movement from Tom Duke and well, this the, the footwork and the changing of direction. He's going to take his time on those legs and he will slow him down. Another, Another thing that's one. also worth noting is that, uh, the redness around uh, Tom Duke and Wire's knees. I mean, I know that Terry Aware is the one that's taking oh, the nice shots punch, to the man. legs, but the marking is certainly nice on the, shot, uh, the Tom Duke and Wire. Another cat kick. kick Another one. one. How's this guy again. walking? I don't know. They made a point of telling the media about staying in front. They have such good strikers just across the water from us here in the UK. He doesn't have the same kind of purchase on that left foot as he had before, does uh, Tom Duke and what? The knee just is buckling a little bit as he's stepping around, which means that he doesn't have full control of that muscle. It must be dead and slightly. It must feel a lot heavier than he did in the first round. Terry and Ware has been wearing those low kicks really well. Yeah. Such a lot of soft tissue, ligaments, and things going on and around that knee. As I just said, ligaments. A bit wild from doing like when a, when a giant dies, his flesh is still moist and soft, right, but them ligaments, when, the, when they dry hole. up, turn into solid stone. So these megaliths you all see all over the planet. That's not a, a, a piece of stone that some man carved out the shape of a, a big giant. It, it was a giant. In the flesh, the flood came, it got trapped in the mud because the springs of water came from deep in the earth as well as from the sky. And the giants got trapped in the mud. They died, they here, drowned, it was more, uh, it was more Duke and, and when their forward flesh was still moist, men went and shaved off, they just pulled blocks, because our bodies are built like blocks, guys, so it's always a house, risk. bricks, in a sense, and they built walls with these giant pieces of flesh, then the flesh dried, and it's hard as stone. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, pretty smart of them men. Little walls made out of Nephilim flesh. Nephilims weren't no damn 15 feet high or a mile high. Or. All right, anyway, we're back in it now. We're going to get a wild 90 seconds now. Both of these guys have had a little breather. Beautiful low kick from Terry Ware. Terry Ware's going after his cast. 
Well, oh, it ah, he got him now. He got his calf bad that time, yo. Oh, there's another one. Oh, my God. I could not take that neck calf. My calf is probably the size of these guys' butts. A real presence of mind there from uh, from Terry Wade. Now they rolling around, rolling around. Looking for a drop. Two dudes rolling over. around with nothing on but shorts. Open guard play, what closes it up? Not my style. Dude. From the bottom. But whatever. As long as they don't do no pokey pokey. Strikes from the guard position. It's all right. It's all right. It's all good. Dude, in the hood. Sliding through the knee shield. He's playing active on the bottom as well, Dan. Yeah, he is very active, but he has slowed down since the first round, and you've got to think that from, from the uh, the corner of Terry and Ware, the shift in pace in favour of Terry and Ware has got to be positive. It's got to be a... It's um, got to fill them with hope for the third round that he can continue to wear on Duke and Wong, probably get the better of him. Yeah, another third three round, you guys. Last couple of seconds. I'm sure it's going to be a long video. I mean, you know... This is going to be 18 minutes total. We just had 18 minutes plus, plus the announcing. 20, 20 minutes total. That's 20 plus 18. That's 38 plus the first fight was probably like 10. Maybe more. No, wait till what? The fourth round? I forget. We are on our way. So we are up to, I can't tell because we're on a different screen, but I'm sure we're at an hour. Probably. Quite a hot game already. Three twenty minute periods. I know, I know, but you're not. But you, but you, you did it without setting it up. Way out in the open. He's giving you all the time in the world on the fence. You keep letting him off. Back his ass up against the fence. Beat him up, and, when he, and then he's going to try and throw one big elbow. That's what he, all he's going to do. See, when you back him up, he tries to throw one. Big Beautiful work here. Look, nice body shots from Don Tom Dukawa. But it was Terry and Ware that started to edge himself forward on the scorecards in that uh, in that second round. Back he's up against, back his ass up against Third the fence. And final <laughs> round ahead now here from the O2 Arena I'm in London. Elbow. Good Watch his elbow. On the call tonight. <laughs> Tom Fike, Duke Edward, oh, another calf hit. Oh, another one. He's going after that. This is to the other side the of the calf. Terry Way is calling it on, but that first low kick really buckled the knee. What was fascinating between rounds was that Terry Blair was having a full conversation with his corner team. He didn't look at all gassed, at all out of breath, wasn't even breathing heavy. Oh boy, his calf. That's four in a row. Snapping at that leg. What has he got in there, Dan? His lesser fighters would really be moving poorly. I said that was just saying, bro. He gets skinny, diddy. Little legs, I love the stuff that Duke and Wild does. It, it looks really nice. It's got a real nice whip to it. His punches are very stinging. His low kicks have oh, a real nice whip one. to it. And it is good at, at, at turning the hits hard of his opponent away. But you just wonder whether the actual power of oh, the kick is there enough for it to have a, a, a He's already in the 20s and 30s on these calf uh, kicks. And usually people last like three or four or five. I mean, when you kick them hard like this dude is. This guy, Terry and Ware, he's got some... 31 to I don't know, they're probably hurting him, but he's just not thinking about it, I don't know. Terry on where actually edging the total strikes, however, 93 to 67 of Duke Noir. So, yeah, I doubt although that. those leg kicks look very nice, Terry on where is... Strike statistics. I think you have some, like, retarded people more adding up so uh, them. strikes here. And it doesn't look like UFC, because you're always way off. Near his sick gear yet. The corner of Terry and Weir really wanted him to push Duke and War up against the fence and work to work to beat him up uh, when he's trapped up against the fence. The one thing they have to watch out for, they've identified, are the big elbows that Tom Duke and War throws when he's backed up. And this is the circumstance here that Weir's going to be watching out for. Keep going, keep going, the kick is good. Oh, another and it's calf kick. Here again from Duke and War. Another calf kick. People are really trying to play lumberjack with these leg kicks tonight. It's not really working. <laughs> like a redwood. Oh, the there's that elbow I was waiting for. Swing and that's in New Jersey. And Paul Walker, play host to FSU. Oh, nice body shot. Barbosa versus Lee. 
two of the world's best 155 pounders jockey for position in MLA's well, tough division. Well, maybe one of the best that character Expo, Lee, man. He's just, he's just a little puff. He's just a little mouthpiece. He's a court jester. Now he's going higher up on the thigh. That poor leg is going to be sad state tomorrow. Oh, lovely fade and left there. That's this body kick Terry on where. I'm starting to feel like these body shots are slowing Duke and Wah down. There were a couple of uppercuts and hooks that we've dug into the body. And Duke and Wah, you can just see him drop his elbows and take a deep breath as he tries to circle to space. Two minutes I think left. he might be right, Outlaw. Final round as Duke and Wah looks to. I think you might be right. You don't he? like when you go to the bottom. Some are more sensitive than others. And I think this guy, he don't like it not one little bit. Frenchy. And then he threw an elbow which just missed afterwards. He only needs one of those elbows to the temple. We have seen that land with great effect before, but Terry Weir is grinding now. He's standing his ground. 105 strikes to from Yeah, tied at 78. Tables are turning. I mean, they are close, but the edge is, is quite clear for, uh, for Terry Weir. Yeah, exactly. I'll hold Dan Hardy. The <laughs> best announcer in all of combat, it's well not the best, but yeah, there, there is, one there is. of the best, Dan the Hardy. The second round as well, so, no, I, I do feel like Terry Weir's put a lot of good work into this one. Real Wu Tang. The more clearly looks the, the, well, the, the more flashy, the more extravagant of the fighters. But the, uh, the numbers Wu -Tang. don't lie. Dan Hardy, Terry Weir real deal. Strikes now. Almost 18 for Man, Duke come on. Searching and leaping forward with that tank, but Blair working out. very nicely behind that jab. Sizing Duke I just watched 10 minutes of y'all with this tap, 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 tap. Well, you now. have been hitting that damn cat for damn hard to give you that. You think I knock someone out with a cat kick. Takes the single leg, does he get the takedown? He does, very nice. Duke can walk back to his feet. Very athletic is the fire kid. Nice opportunity taken there as well by... Terry on where on that takedown, nice work as well, without the break. Keeps on making contact with Duke and Wah. Oh, left and second. A nice kick. kick. Last few seconds. Oh, Close quarters oh changes, another calf kick. That is the end of that fight. Oh, that's really three rounds, today. you guys. I thought that was just two. That's it. The what fight is over. Oh, this Terry is a hard one to call, really man. To victory here. And all those calf kicks. I don't know. But Terry Young was had the pressure. See, I don't know how these judges Duke decide. Well it's stupid for me, though. Oh, my God. How are they going to decide? Because the guy who deserves it usually don't get the knock. It's not a tool until that day when all 8 billion of us get to decide. Then we'll see when that many people make a decision. You know, then you get a good sense of who won. Terry Weir is that guy that's been brought in as one of the veterans that is a good, what to call a good it, testing ground for these young prospects. More minds and what we saw tonight was he really test Tom Duke and Wall, not only in the striking range, but with the grappling and um, uh, and with the pace as well. Duke and Wall can take yeah, a lot a from this fight. Kicks. He can learn a lot about what he needs to do to improve and continue climbing the rankings. But Terry and Weir did a great job there of, uh, uh, of keeping the pace consistent and wearing on Tom Duke. I don't like it. It's really hard. I just don't know. Like I said, this, you know, who are they going to give to? I don't know. Agonizing weight but I, I can say this. Of these fighters, I got a lot of respect for Frenchie. Like and I got a lot of respect for Cali. California. California. Both of them have got enough respect for Pope. Let's send it inside to Bruce Buffer to find out. See these jokes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three Decide rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for butt. decision. The judges for the contest 29 28, 29 28, and 30 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Tom Firekid Dupayla. Damn, they gave it to Frenchie. Maybe his I mean, dad he it, sent in the last second. That was a tough fight. Real Last second little fight. offering. Is that you expected from Terry and Wayne? I know he was a he was a tough opponent, but uh, he definitely proved that he won uh, one of the most valuable uh, warrior in the in the business.
what was your game plan coming into this fight? You obviously researched your opponent. What did you plan for him? Actually, the game plan was to to stay on on my style, avoiding the the draw, the tough war, taking the angle, using using that guy with the the low kick. And as a young man, you've got a lot of attention. A lot of people are following your career. What do you continue to do to improve between these fights? As you just see tonight, the the the, the the way to the, to the title is very long yet, and I'm going to do uh, everything I can to, to pursue my dream. And what's next for you? Is there somebody else you would like to fight? For the moment, taking the thing step by step on vacation, and I will be back 100% at it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Dukinwa! Uh, that's it for that, that y'all. Sponsored by EA Sports UFC 3. Become the GOAT in the best UFC game so. ever made. EA Sports UFC 3 on sound. Was that? Minimize that. My nose is starting to stuff up. I got the window open. I'm telling you, I don't know what. I don't know why, but. Stop messing with the air quality like that, man. You know, I would go put on my aromatherapies, but I've seen it before. It really don't matter. They put some heavy stuff on it. Heavy, some heavy stuff on it. We just minimize this to see where we at here. Oh yeah, we're still recording. All right, cool. We had a hunt, an hour twenty. So we we had a hockey, we had a hockey game, and we just had the first overtime period, full twenty minute overtime period. And now we're going into what's that called? Uh, Dean. I don't know, but I'm still going. So that's a good thing, right? You're still with me, maybe. Some means. So let me go back here. Click. All right, and down we go. Let's roll this thing down, down, down we go. Okay, Don Tukini. Okay, this. Oh, this is the first one on the main card. Leon Edwards, A.K.A. Rocky, fourteen and three, number fifteen, welterweight. Good, one hundred and seventy pounders, y'all. That's right in the middle. In case you don't know, it starts at 125, goes to 265. So, 170 is like, you know, 45 pounds from 125. But, you know, yeah, obviously, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, more from, but it's basically middle class. Not middle class, because it's a middleweight. You know, welterweight, 170 pounds. Watch. Try again. Watch. It will be an important clash in the welterweight division tonight when surging veteran Peter Sabota tries to hold off the charge of Birmingham's Leon Edwards, who hopes to extend his current winning streak to five. Unbeaten in England since 2012, Leon Edwards hasn't just been winning at home, but on the international scene as well, with victories in his last four fights over the likes of Vicente Luque and Brian Barberina, establishing his credentials in the UFC and putting him on the verge of the top ten. Tonight, Rocky could make that move, but in seasoned veteran Peter Sabota, he will be in with a fighter who has been showing the best form of his 14-year career with wins over Nicholas Dalby and Ben Saunders, clearly representing the best of his UFC run. Coming up next, Peter Sabota, Miss Leon, Rocky Edwards. And there is Peter Sabota coming out with the Jamaican flag, but born in Poland, raised in Germany. The Sabota team asked for Edwards to open their door to the top 15. To unlock that opportunity though, they took the camp out to Phuket top team in Thailand and have experienced their most diverse training camp in Sabota's career. Let's see what it produces. Well, this for me is one of the most important welterweight fights that we can put together in Europe at this stage. Leon Edwards just crept into the top 15. He's sitting at 15. Peter Sabota has put a real good run together in his second stint in the octagon.
and he's really looking for that own his own ranking place as well now a win over uh, leon edwards is really going to put him up there in amongst the mix at the top 15. leon edwards on the other hand has now got that opportunity to fight a top 15 opponent but uh, uh, before that he's got to go through peter sabota and peter sabota is going to put him under all kinds of pressure tonight brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt with the dean lister he's got a lot of confidence in his hands as well now he knows he's got power and what he did to Ben Saunders in their last fight was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, a round two TKO win against Ben Saunders. That was a fantastic fight. He actually broke his hand in that contest, so he needed some time off to heal that. He then went away and got married, and has been around the world cornering teammates and students, but very much had his eyes focused when this fight was announced. And it's an interesting one, Dan, because that four and one in his second stint leaves him four and four overall with his UFC record. So he can tip into positive territory finally tonight, make up that lost ground. And it's like we've seen two different athletes. It, yeah, it must almost seem like a whole different life to him. I mean, the, the fight that he signed with originally when he was the UFC and the fights that came in after that after that, uh, that time away were entirely different. It was like he grew up 10 years. It was like he realized what he's capable of. He realized his potential. That string of rear naked choke was huge for his confidence. Here with us in London, Peter Sabota. A bona fide threat in the welterweight division, but not perhaps getting the respect he deserves. Leon Rocky Edwards has been beating other young prospects and a hard-nosed battler in Brian Barberina, but still not offered a man up the food train. So, he plans on making a huge statement here at home in the UK and walking away with a knockout victory. Well, another knockout here would lead to five, five fights in a row for him, five wins in a row. Now, Leon Edwards is a very slick operator. Sometimes he can get caught hanging back and holding on and waiting for that perfect shot which never comes. And that's my concern in this fight with the aggression of Peter Zabota. But you've got to think Peter Zabota's got to cover ground to get his hands on Leon Edwards. And Leon Edwards' fast counter striking is a danger to anybody. He's very accurate, he's very sharp, he's very diverse. So he can draw upon many, many different techniques. And he's able to land cleanly with one shot and switch people off, as we saw against Seth Bajinski at eight seconds into the first round. Yeah, running that really long win streak as well. 6-0 and oh when competing in Europe for the UFC as well. As I said, he kind of all referred to the fact that he wanted a top 10 guy, but more than anything, he wanted to fight here in London, Dan. That was the biggest thing, and, I, and that's what the Sabato camp kind of sniffed out, and the, this fight came about. But he's going to tr try and prove tonight that he's worthy of big fight matchups. Great to have him back with us, Leon Rocky Edwards. Let's go over to the tape of the tape then for this welterweight bout. England's Edwards is younger than Sabota by four, five years. Both welterweights are six foot, but Sabota will try to use that one inch reach advantage. One inch reach With advantage. that, we send it back inside to the voice of the literally that. Buffer. Come on, man. It ain't gonna Ladies make a dang difference. We are I mean, sure, if the reach advantage is plus six inches, From which the is like that, arena in it's still not a lot. England. You only got to do it just stretch a little USA more on the call, man, with your reach event. Yeah, I mean, if it's like John Jones with 84 reach against some Demetrius Johnson with a 20-inch Tyrannosaurus reach, it's going to make a difference. Of course it is. They got Peter Sabota as the underdog. Biggest underdog, that means the house. The house, I don't know, I, I really don't, one thing I don't understand is how all the vet system works. I tried to figure it out one time, I seen that movie Casino, which is about that guy Lefty, that Jewish dude Lefty who they brought over from the East Coast to run the casino because he knew numbers and how to make odds. And I was like, oh man, he's so smart, he's so cool. I want to know what he knows. And maybe I could be a jet, run a casino like that guy left. But that was like 
Man, when was Casino? That was so long ago. I don't want to run a damn Casino. I run Heaven on Earth Project Rocky Ura, man. That's my calling. I love it. Here we go, y'all. I'm a Max Max. Bang. Here we go. I am expecting Zabota to try and find his way to a body lock or a clinch of some sort. Especially in these early rounds when Leon Edwards is at his quickest. See the speed of that left hand just glanced off the cheekbone of Zabota there. But Zabota as well, and has some very, very advanced striking. Yes, he has that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, and that's perhaps what we really use the sort of champion. Ah, it's getting caught him. It's just been caught by Leon caught him. Goes tumbling down to the canvas. Look at this beautiful arm attack. Wow, isolated that quick time. Zabata's got him in an arm attack. Leon Edwards is trying to pull out, but that could extend his arm. He has to stack him. It don't look good for Leon Edwards. He got too confident tried to finish him. Now he's caught up in an arm bar. It's a and they just said how good this guy is on the ground. Oh, no, no, nope, nope, got out of it. Got out of it. It was a warning shot across the bow. He knows that he can't play games in the guard of Peter Zabota. Yeah, true. I love fights like this, Dan. And you get a knockdown, and, then all, and the guy responds with a submission attempt that's super close as well. Such a high-level grappler is Peter Zabota, and his lineage stands for itself. Now he's got the overhook on the far side, the, the, uh, the right arm of Leon Edwards must be looking to set up a triangle again. Oh, absolutely, Peter Zapata, you could write a novella on his submission options. He's on the inside. Good work by Leon Edwards here, trying just to stay on the high ground, his opponent's playing around with trying to stay chest to chest. Two naked dudes Makes on the ground, rubbing up against each other. Isolating shoulders and chest and, and, and arms. Not my style. Is he safe with his hands in this position, though, Dan? Because well, I've always understood if you as soon as you put him near the canvas, you could no. be in trouble. That overhook's always, no always a danger. I would say it's less of a danger when it's no key. Of the I feel like you can always get out of those circumstances, time. but with someone that's got the squeeze and, and well, clamping ability you know, of Peter Zabota, that flesh there is still a risk there. You can see, still flesh playing for that overhook there. To isolate you know, right shoulder. rebellion against God. Let it fall on angels dictate kind of stupid shit that they do. I think here he's going to wait until Leon Edwards opens up. Be he free. tries to throw a strike and then he's going to try to isolate the rules. off again. That's a right thing. This is a pretty crafty. Only but a few rules. Well, if you can't follow but a few Albert rules terminal. so as to stay in when God's good standing, well, I just don't know we what to tell be you. Because you follow other kinds of rules, but you won't follow that rule. Why is that? Absolutely, John. We can't count out Leon Edwards' game. He has got eight sufficient wins on his record. Why? Because he has got three sufficient wins on his record. You can see the respect that he's given Peter Zabota here. Nice. He's in Peter Zabota's corner. He knows that Zabota's got many, many options from this position. Normally, if you were deranged with with the Monies, I don't want no damn dude up. I don't want to be near a naked dude. Let alone have some dude up in. But no, no, no. See, when the fallen angels get to me, he's going to be nice to have a dude up in here. Then you start going, maybe I should just explore that. I'm going to try and call this one a couple of feet, I would think. Yeah, there he is. Walks away. The fight will get back vertical. Here we go, back, back on the feet now. Check out the UFC store on your mobile device. Get your favorite fighter gear and more. Shop now and receive 15% off during tonight's fight. Oh, that's a nice jet. UFC L-O-N. So Bonta heavy on that lead leg. Tried to push a jab out a couple of times there. In anticipation for this bounce with Edwards. Sabata heavy on the side of the Bullpen top team. Got a lot of good points. He always hesitated her to jerk. Pop but he that thing out there. Nice oh, that's oh, a nice point. Oh, that was a beautiful jab, Peter. That's a beautiful jab, my brother. A lot of strong Russian fighters in particular. Leon Edwards is hanging back and waiting. I, I feel like he's waiting for Sabata to move so he can counter. That left hand is chambered, ready to go. He's at oh, nice jab, to Peter. With the jab, but it's Sabata that's landing good quality jabs at the moment. That's two to the cheekbone of Leon Edwards. Edwards said that Sabata brings nothing that he hasn't previously seen. Oh. He actually passed. Yeah, some booze because these guys just the ain't throwing it. Worry too much about what might happen if they do. Stop worrying about it. Just do it. 
for that. A lot of Peter Zabotta fans in the crowd, a lot of t-shirts, Peter Zabotta t-shirts. Leon yes. Edwards with the body kick there. Oh, he is looking for that counter, Dan, you're very right. That was good head movement by Zabotta though. Stop. Right. Round. Is that round two over? Interesting stuff Fascinating in that first, first round. round. Oh, really that's just the first see how round. Guys play off against each other. I'm not going to pretend like I'm real excited about this. I'll just so show let's you. Let's take a look at this. You can see Leon Edwards. Yes, they got in here. Nail, some Long new tape. Right hook, just had the green, right on the chest. got red and black. The, the, like the I said, this is hot and grip. But, right hook but this one's one company. This is a in different one. And I like this one. As soon as you see I'll show you. This here is from the company Ren Free. Or Ren Free. By both guys there. Very even round to score. Good knockout from Leon Edwards. Through. I prefer this one. It's a little more expensive. But it's worth it. And the other one, see, I got um three rolls of this for ten bucks. But oh yeah, here we go. Got a whole box. And that lightweight title tilt serves as a headliner for UFC 223. Not red through. Got a whole box of Russian Sambo World Champion and undefeated top challenger Khabib Nurmagomedov. UFC 223 Saturday, bucks. April 7th, 7 versus 3. Good so the Red Crew was twice round. as much, but well, it's well worth it, my friend. Edwards felt the danger of Zabata's ground game. Oh, here you go, the other one. Yes, you can here you go. Like I said, I got, got three rolls of the kind, and it's worth it. Get the Red Crew. Oh, I'm going to cap up my lemon butter. I doubt it would dry out, but... Just cap that up. See how that's smelling. Let it sit for a while. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Oh, it's, it's not as uh, it's soaked in a lot. Of this, what was hoping to catch Sabota in the midsection, but as Sabota circled towards it, he caught the kick at an earlier stage. Happy St. Patty's Day, y'all. Just right on the edge of the cup there. Isn't that weird how I got this thing in the mail yesterday? And I've been talking a little about the odds of Mars. It's just weird. That's just the, that's just job mysterious. That's why it's called the job, the, the, the job is there, but even so, you, you, you still feel and the like God you still Chronicles, feel like you still feel ready, you still feel like you still feel like you still feel like you know, Browns, John Mysterious, Miss Chronicles, and the Godsmack Chronicles. Soaked up a lot of that lemon water, it's not as slippery now. He's bailing out a little bit on that jab, button. which makes me nervous. You can see as Sabota throws his jab, he's dropping his Second head round. up to the left side. Because he's expecting the counter shot coming over the top from Leon Edwards from the left hand. Both characters are light and quick. So you, you can see he's turning his head slightly as he's stepping in with that jab. He's anticipating the overhand left from Leon Edwards. Unfortunately, that leaves you actually more vulnerable for the overhand because it turns the line of your chin towards your opponent's punch. Looking for that head position. I'd be very surprised if Leon Edwards invests in a takedown oh. here, but look at that. He invested in it, just like he said he was a gun, Dan Outlaw, but he sure did invest in it. Like, invest in a takedown. One way to put it, he invested in it. Is it going to pay dividends? As soon as Leon Edwards creates space, the boss is going to move. There he goes. Tries to get his guard back. Kick his hips out to the side, maybe he can elevate with that butterfly hook that he's got on the right leg. Stay working, stay working, stay working, stay working. Yeah, it's a bottom of the top leg knee shield now, using that shin bone across the midsection of Leon Edwards to try and create some space. That will allow him to slide his underhook in and start working to a get up. Oh, look at this, Dagger. Go Kimura. for a Kimura. Diving in for a Kimura. Looks like he has his arm laced through, but he doesn't have a oh. good grip on it so far. Maybe he's going to try and re adjust it. Yank that thing right out there. And he's trying to grab the inside of his Black leg. Black dude's keeping it tucked Steps in there. Up. Leon's keeping it tucked in there. Open. Oh, Put his leg around him. Look at the stamp he's his back. Wow, he's Very really nice good on the ground. This is Sabata with the Jamaican flag. He wants to. Now he it's going to shake him off, though. Goes high. 
Yes. Shit, get up this man. Get off my back. So the with those beads of sweat all over Leon Edwards' body that are forcing him to clamp on harder and use more energy from his muscles to try and control his opponent. Good leverage here, Dan, as well. It's a bit of purchase. Leon's on the good head. at defending. The Kimura traps are well. there. Yeah, but you see what Leon That's Edwards has got to do now is if he can, if he can uh, lace his left leg over Peter Sabota's right leg and circle round towards the back, he can nullify the arm attack. Now he's in danger. Oh, beautiful work. Get his elbow clear. At this point, are you thinking maybe Edwards should go back to the striking exchanges then? Or? Well, quite possibly, but, you know, Peter Zabotta was landing good low kicks. He was landing good jabs. So maybe Leon Edwards feels right. like if he can get ahead on the scorecards a little bit, there's less of a risk in that last round to you know, take a few chances when Zabotta's tired. Yes, as John Danaher will say, less dynamic movement and risk of being knocked out when you're on the ground. Good work controlling from the top position by Leon Edwards, but you've got to think Rich Mitchell is going to think about standing them up if nothing's happening. Edwards now has up to five minutes and 25 seconds in this position. It's so difficult as the rounds get later on to uh, to control somebody in guard bottom and to try and attack something. Step back. Not enough there for the referee, Rich Mitchell. Back on their feet. Leon Edwards showed the overhand left there. He's waiting for that Sabota jab, John, I'm telling you. The problem with that is that he can he can allow the time to slip through his fingers while Peter Sabota's edging forward on the scorecards. He needs to stop pulling the trigger. Peter Zabot is going to lean in with that jab in a second, but Leon Edwards is going to try and come over the top with the left hand. And that's what Zabot is waiting for. It's a bit of a stalemate nice at the moment. Counting down into the last 10 seconds now. There it is again, Jan. There it is. He's looking for that this. overhand left, and that seems to be his only focus, which is limiting him at nice the moment. He's moving in his attack. Do more gut that reaction attacks, afterwards as well where he goes to the bottom. They do know how, how, a little bit of a how serious it is. Yeah, absolutely. Nice gut. Yeah, definitely. Just checking out this. Is this this supposed to be the same same size, which it is, I can tell that. And weight, which it is. But it's not like a lacrosse ball. If this was a real lacrosse ball and I went bam on my hardwood floor, my mom's maple hardwood floors, it would go boom 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 bump on a ceiling. <laughs> Maybe not, but to win just say, this you right here is like a hack you gotta set. So let's that. just see. Right? You do that for the clear. Yeah. 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 You have to give everything you got. Just kind of thud. But I wanted to see how it felt. You know? So a little mini lacrosse stick. You know, but I'm telling you, it's, it's just like a lacrosse I mean, it's a little mini one. But me, my mom, my brother James, when my brother James came to visit, we went to a, a Duke versus UVA, University of Virginia, lacrosse match. And at the time, Duke was like number, number one, and Virginia was number two. And it was lovely. It was so lovely. It was an outdoor lacrosse is outdoor. They have laying indoor lacrosse. How is lacrosse is outdoor? What did it take from those corners? Real quick, we got these free. Five dollar tickets to get in, and the gates one of these. I mean, this thing's got to be worth more than five bucks. I just see one on eBay for two hundred. So I really don't understand that. Don't understand that. How you can charge five dollars for a ticket and give somebody a twenty dollar free giveaway, but is hey, whatever. Terms, though, I, I, I got three of them. Yeah, my mom possibly, and brother you know, weren't really into it. So I said so they don't the have three, one for them points, too. And I have three of these right over there in the corner. Yeah, like, and you know, my brother and I went outside and was playing around. So he can land the overhand left. You know, his see if they threw nice and they did. Tell me, it's got a nice little pocket. And I haven't doctored it. You get a lacrosse stick, you want to doctor it a little bit. So that it feels nice, but it's nice already. It just rolls nice. Oh, oh, yeah. 
movement don't get caught on the lip. That was really nice. Slip to the outside of the jab. You want to the look up the other so side of the jab. When you're on the chin. Still looking for that out. left hand, though. It's just right. Which is I always feel like if Rocky threw that combination as that he would land a lot more of these finishing strikes. Like, uh, but because like, he looks at those short shooter punches, you know, he would like to land it against, against Seth Bajinski a few years ago. Oh, that was a good shot from Peter Zapata. Drove straight through. Everything's good. Now Nick was now finding himself on the back. Found its reason. Right, Bob? Right. With the fight Zapata transitioning. Edwards is working back to his feet already, though. Leon Edwards working very closely with Tom Breeze on his grappling these days. Hold your left hand has got to be as good as your right hand. When you first start, when you first start, your right hand, my right hand was dominant. I didn't like to try to use my left, I was scared to. But you practice. After a while, yeah, he's the absolute good job, but he's still not out of danger here. Peter Zapata is going to look to try and drag him to the floor, but the problem is Leon Edwards is not giving him the stimulus that he wants. Blast off my left, or bam, bam. Good takedown defense, beautiful work. That's funny, because I see my friend Sasha, I saw him play a set in Brazil. When he plays, he writes with his left hand, but... He plays guitar with his right hand, if I remember right, and I play pool. Quite possibly, yes. My left you know, team. The other so, thing as well is he's, he's not really showing a great deal of his game, which is fighting. beneficial. Now he's inside the top 15. There'll be a lot of eyes oh, sorry, on the guys. Edwards, so maybe he's trying to rewind. show as little as... Oh, Poor Ye against Justin Gacy. Of his game, which is Sweet. beneficial. Now he's inside what the top 15. What was that? What was that? Lovely work. April 14th. Oh man, that's in a month. Poor Ye against Gaethje. I love the doubts. Gila Rim. Arizona, I was in the Gila National Park. I am going to go into that right now, but basically, me and my friend Bert was going cross country after I left Hawaii. After I left Hawaii in May 1994, I, to be honest, John, I'm expecting whoever wins this fight to try and call out that hotel. Because I think they see, but they both I see him as their Hawaii window to Seattle. Stage, my friend Burr, that I knew from Peter Fowler Prep, picked me up in the Seattle airport, and we drove all night to Leon Edwards talking about the real Gorilla being on the home in this weekend. To, uh, and Leon Edwards talking about Portland. the real Gorilla being on the home in this weekend. Well to wait no, I'm sorry, so we drove to um, Mount Hood, like um, so in the but they need an impressive performance here tonight if they're going to do that. Snowboard friends. Because he's got a parallel what Till did to Cowboy. And then the next day, we drove to Portland, and he knew his sister, and we didn't have much money, but we bought one ounce of time, bud, Oregon, bud, one ounce of mushrooms, still side. And so we had an ounce of each for the whole trip to the East Coast. That was our plan. Drive from really the West Coast to, to the East Coast and take our time. And we did. Took us a month. But on the way, we, we wanted to go near the Grand National the Grand Canyon. So we stopped at Gila National fight. Park to sleep. We got there about 5 p.m. Right before it's going to get dark. And he was setting up the tent, campsite, and I walked down to the lake and some guy, old guy was fishing. And he looked at me funny and gave me a bad vibe. And I didn't understand why. The sun was about to set, it was pretty. I walked back to Burke and uh, I didn't say nothing. And we decided we was going to eat some mushrooms, so we did. In about 30 minutes in, before they really started to take effect, some young dude came up to us, he had long hair, and he was like, you know where you guys are? We need to go we're like, John, no, because it, it was getting real packed. Well, he He's like, this is a national park law enforcement seminar retreat. This was 30 minutes into our muscles about the bus on our brains. There's a lot to handle, let me tell you. And it got dark, this young dude was... But good a new boy, recruit, was there a and it happened to be his father who really was fishing. What he's capable of. I still feel like, his father told you know, him to come and talk to us, and he'll be out. So, the kid was like, well, you know, 
this new generation ain't like them. I grow my own herb. And, and then he said, what do you all want? We were like, some mushrooms. And he was like, I'll trade you some of my herbs and some of your mushrooms. So we did a little trade and trade. But it was quite a shocker to realize he was just eating shrooms. Had all this herb and shrooms. And he was in a long force of I uh, surrounded in the middle of the forest. Sometimes Joss so funny, man. He's so funny. But we were safe and sound. We are safe and sound. It's all good. It's a good story. It's a good memory. We never did make it to the, to the Grand Canyon, y'all. We never did get there. We were only like 30 minutes away, actually. Gila National Forest. Is that in Arizona or New no, I'm so weak. Man, I'm tripping. He will maintain his ranking. Yeah. At the very least, I might Mexico have it mixed up. Gila was maybe in New Mexico. Nice work, it, 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 I basically bit. got 95% nice. of that accurate. But, uh. Rounds one and two, but he got it done. Let's send it inside. Anyway, I missed the end of it. This fight was stupid. I don't even care who won. I'll let you contest. see it if you're curious, I guess. I guess we are not so curious. Who did they pick? Became the winner Who did they pick? Oh, he did not do it. Oh, it's a TKO. Okay. Was that round three? At 4.59? A second before Ladies the big fight? And then he did it. Leon Edwards. Darren Till. How do you want to fight? The Liverpool, let's go. Me and you. Liverpool versus Birmingham. Let's go. All day, easy work. I'm the best fucking out to end up in the UK. End up, seems to be in the world. Bye. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's a big call out for Darren yeah, Till. That's nice, because Darren Till's been crying Make about. Noise. No one wants to fight me. I'm so good. Everyone's talking about me, but no one wants to fight me. They scared. You just got called out. Dude. So what you gonna say? Well, he's only ranked 15. I'm uh, ranked number well seven. You don't deserve to fight me. Or are you gonna be like, all right, let's do it. We'll see. We'll see. I bet he didn't like being called out by this little dude though, because he wanted to try to fight somebody, you know, higher up. Because they all want the belt. He's stupid. I want the gold belt. I want the gold belt. You want to fight somebody who you think yeah. is going to test you know, your flow. That's what Marshall Arthur's like all about. Looking for the overhand Back in the day, the Samurais, when they walked the, right the path, the, the Samurai path, the path and they came across another martial artist, it was about, it's like Justin Gaethje. He's like that. He's like an old Samurai. He's like, I'm looking for my equal, and I understand exactly Justin. I do seek my equal as well, brother. And I'll tell you what, and I'll as tell soon you as the blood started to pour out onto the canvas, you could see the fight draining. These guys now Leon Edwards worrying about this gold here. belt. Whether he got it, it or not, I'm not sure, but it's about finding someone who's going to test your strength and faith in God and your flow with God. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. It ain't no problem with the game, though. The former UFC middleweight champion, anyway, UK MMA that's my pioneer. take on that. Scratch that MMA pioneer. I'm going to stop this now. Right here with us in London. Badoom. Gonna minimize. Badoom. And that was the main event, like I said. Yeah, I can probably end this now. Can just do the main event. You know, because y'all had enough of me, I'm sure. So, let's just minimize this. Badoom. And where are we at here? A minute 52. See, that was two hours. And four fights lasted two hours. I don't know how. 9.2 gigabytes. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. A little different. You didn't see me. Well, no, you did see me. But I was talking about what I saw. And that was UFC fight night with the at London. And yeah, you see me. All right. Charlie Popoki, Catamount, signing off. Ladies.